All right, so in this video, we're going to look at scientific notation and talk about how you write numbers in scientific notation and what that actually means. So when you keep in mind that oftentimes when you talk about really big numbers or really small numbers, the numbers themselves often get lost, okay, and you kind of forget actually how much different numbers stand for. So we're going to talk about scientific notation and talk about something times 10 to the second or 10 to the third or something times 10 to the negative second, okay? I want you to just keep in mind that that's representing another number that's written out. We often do scientific notation, like I said, for numbers that are really large or really, really small. So please keep that in mind that it's just a way to represent different numbers, okay? So I want us to organize these numbers, okay? Organize some numbers on one number line. And then we're gonna check here and see how we're doing. So I want you to organize these particular numbers onto that number line. I'm gonna write them out for you. So if I had one, times 10 to the first, one times 10 to the zero, the number 10, the number negative one, make sure you put the number zero in there, and let's go 10 to the negative second. So I want you to put those numbers on that number line. Okay, so let's see what these numbers would be on that number line. I gotta remember what numbers I even had. So first off, let's start with the easy one. Let's deal with zero. So we'll put zero in the middle. So you know what, let's go. So let's put zero in the middle. And we'll look at, obviously we should know where 10 goes. Okay, we'll put 10 here. And I also gave you negative one. So obviously negative one is gonna be a negative number. Actually, you know what? Let's move your zero down further. Put zero down here. So I've got negative one. Okay. I also said 10 to the first. If something is to the first power, okay, that means you're dealing with moving the decimal over one place. Okay, so I have one times 10 to the first, which means I have one, and I move that decimal over one more place, which will make it 10. So 1 times 10 to the first is the same thing as 10. I also had 10 to the 0, okay? Or 1 times 10 to the 0. So that means I'm not moving at any spaces. So I just have 1, I'm not moving any spaces, which means I really only have 1. I'm going to kind of put 1 even in the middle. We're not going to be really to scale. So that's 1. It's the same thing as 1 times 10 to the 0, okay? And I also had 10, 1 times 10 to the negative second. So we said one, meant that we're moving at one place to the right. If you went to the negative second, that means you're going two places to the left. Okay, so I start with one, and I'm gonna go two places to the left of one. So I go one, two. So I have point oh one. Point oh one it has the same thing as one times ten to the negative second. Notice how it's a negative second does not mean it is a negative number. It just means you move the decimal place to the left, meaning it is a number that is less than 1. Okay? If I were to say 10 to the 3rd, or 1 times 10 to the 3rd, that's going to be a big number. Now we're going 3 places past 1. So I take my number 1, and I'm going to go 1, 2, 3 places. Okay? It's going to be 1,000. If I had 1 times 10 to the negative 3rd, that would be even smaller. It would go right in there. Okay? The only way you have a negative number if you would say it would be negative 1 times 10 to the second, that would be negative 100. Okay, if you had negative 1 times 10 to the negative second, that would be negative 0.01. A negative exponent just means how many times bigger, and you're always talking about times 10. So 10 times bigger or 10 times smaller. That's why it is times 10, because you're going 10 times larger or 10 times smaller. If you are 10 to the negative second, you're dealing with 10 times smaller. If you are dealing with 10 to the second, you are 10 times 10 bigger. Okay? So, standard notation definition. All right? So if I look at standard notation, the number is written out. So I would say, um, you know, 1,000. Or I write it out as 0 0.00. Uh, one. Okay, those are standard numbers, numbers right now. Now, if I want to write them in notation, okay, if I have a number greater than one, 
like my 10,000. So say I have this 10,000, and I want to write that in standard notation, okay? It ha or in scientific notation. I have to write it as 1 times 10, and I'm dealing with a number um, that is larger than 1. So I start here and say, okay, how many times would I have had to move the decimal place? I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. So that is 1 times 10 to the 4th is 10,000. Some people will teach you to go start here and go 1, 2, 3, 4. It doesn't make any difference. You've got to remember what the number itself means. Okay? If you have a number less than 1, so say I had, I had 0.001, okay, I'm going to move that to be less than um, a number that is 1. It's going to be a negative exponent. And so I'm going to move it 1, 2, 3 places. 10 to the negative third, 1 times 10 to the negative third. Numbers greater than 1 are positive. Numbers less than 1 have a negative exponent. Notice how, though, every single number for scientific notation is based on a power of 10, okay? And it's something times 10 to the something else. The number out in front, your exponent, okay, that number there has to be between 1 and 9. You're writing it in correct scientific notation, okay? So off the side here, I want you to make a little note, all right? You can write it not in si correct scientific notation and still be represent a number. It's just not always right, technically, okay? If I wanted to write 1.4 times 10 to the third, okay? That number, if I were to write that out, I'm going to go three places, and it's a number greater than one, so I'm going to go three places to the right when I do this, okay? So 1, 4, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, Places. 1.4 times 10 to the third. 1, 2, 3. 1400. Another way you could write the number 1400, okay, I could also write that as um, 14 times 10 to the second. Okay, because if I have 14, I got to go two more places. Look at that. Same number. I could also write, it wouldn't be right notation. But I could write it as, say I want to put it as 0 0.14 times 10 uh, to the 4th. Because I'm going to start with 0.14, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, so it means 1400, okay? So the thing is, is that this is not correct notation here, and neither is this one. But they still all represent the exact same number, all right? Just the middle one is kind of the correct notation. Okay, so let's convert some numbers. So I want to convert the following numbers to whatever it isn't. So I have 0.135. Okay, so I got to move my decimal place a little bit. I'm going to go one, two, three. Three places would go all the way over. But all I want is a number to be between one and nine. So I need to go all the way over to the right. Okay, all I need to go is just one place here. I'm going to write that as 1.35 times 10. And how many places did I move it? I moved it 1. Okay. And it's a number less than 1, so it's negative. Okay. Try the next one. How many places do I have to move it to get that number between 1 and 9? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 3.8 times 10 to the 5th. Now it's a number less than 1, so that was negative 5. And the number itself is negative. Okay? Go ahead and try those last few and then check the video when you get done. Okay, so those are all the answers you should have had for your um, the rest of them there. 6.92 times 10 to the 9th. For D, it should have been 10300. For E, it should be 0 0.00882. And then for F, it's negative 65. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, okay? The more zeros you have there, this is a larger number because that exponent there is much larger. The bigger that exponent is, the bigger the number, okay? Now, sometimes what you can do is add or subtract or multiply or divide in scientific notation. Um, you, I'm going to make you do a few of these without a calculator so that you know how these work. Normally, you will have a calculator, okay? But I do want you to know how all of this kind of works, all right? So if I'm going to add or subtract numbers in scientific notation, okay? The big thing to remember here is you have to have the same exponent. 
If I have two numbers, they must have the same exponent. So if they're not the same exponent, you need to change them to be the same. And if you always go the same way, it'll make your life easier. Okay, you usually want to change them to both be the larger number. It'll kind of end up actually making your life a little bit easier if you do. You don't have to, but it'll be able to make it a little bit easier. So let's look at an example. Okay, if you have 1,300, and I want to add that to 14,200. When you put it in your calculator, do a little mental math there, you should get 15,500. So nothing has changed. All I'm going to do now is write this in scientific notation and add them and show you how it works. So another way to write 1300 is just 1 1.3 times 10 to the third. I'm going to add to that 1.42 times 10 to the fourth because I had to move four places for that one. It's 10 times bigger, roughly, than 1300. Okay. Well, I can't just add this exponent to that exponent because you're not talking about the numbers lining up in the same column, all right? They're not lining up together, so you can't just add the two numbers and call it 2.72, okay? So I'm gonna write it here. You cannot, it is not equal to 2.72 times 10 to the seventh. You do not just add the numbers and add the exponents. It does not work that way, okay? How it works, okay? So in your space here, you wanna write, and this is how it actually goes. I have to make them the same exponent, and it's usually easier to make them a larger one. So I'm going to add the 1.42 times 10 to the 4th, and I'm going to make my other one to be times 10 to the 4th. Well, how do I do that? i got to represent the same number. So how am I going to get to be 1,300 here, but move my decimal four times? So I want to end here. i got to go 1, 2, 3, 4. So if I wrote it as... 0 0.13, it would be times 10 to the 4th. Not correct notation, but the right number still. Now I can just add them. Now I can just take, I'm going to underline it here, my 0.13 and my 1.42, and I will get um, my 1.55. And then I just carry down the times 10 to the 4th. So you have to have the same exponent, and you usually want to make the smaller exponent into the larger one. Okay? So multiplying and dividing is a lot easier when you multiply or divide, okay? All you got to do is multiply or divide the coefficients. And when you multiply, you have to add the exponents. And when you divide, you subtract the exponents. And that works just like what you would do for math if it was, a, you know, x squared or x to the fourth or something, okay? But the coefficients, as we call them, are the numbers out in front. You just do the math, which means you're either going to multiply or divide those numbers. Okay, and we'll look at some examples here, hopefully to straighten you out. Okay, so on the back side now, I'm going to look at, some, look at some examples. So we're going to do the addition ones first, because those are definitely the tougher ones. Okay, I want to make them the same exponent. So I have 4 times 10 to the 4th and 2 times 10 to the fifth. I gotta make them the same exponent. So I gotta make this one right here something times 10 to the fifth. Then I gotta go one more place. So which way do I gotta move it? I move it one place to the left and make it 0.4 because 0.4 times 10 to the fifth is the exact same number as 4 times 10 to the fourth. All we're doing is make it so we can add them. So then I add that to 2 times 10 to the fifth and we get 2.4 times 10 to the fifth. So now I have a little bit different. Now I've got a negative exponent. So I have 2 times 10 to the negative second, and then I have 4 times 10 to the negative third. So I told you they usually go to the higher number and make your life easier, higher exponent. But what's the bigger exponent? Negative 2 or negative 3? The larger exponent is actually negative 2, because we're talking about a little bit bigger of a number. Okay? So this is, the negative third is actually a smaller number. So I want to change both of them to be to the negative second. So we do the same thing, subtract, move it one place to the left, and now I can subtract the two. Give me 1.6 times 10 to the negative second. Go ahead, try C and D. OK, 
Okay, so those are answers for C and D. All right. E, we're looking at multiplication. So all I do is I multiply my coefficients. So 3 times 2 is 6. I add my exponents. 6 times 10 to the 8th. These are really easy. Okay, go ahead and try um, F, G, and H, and I'll walk you through I. Okay, the only one to really watch out for between um, F, G, and H would be um, letter G. G, you have a 5 minus a negative 2, which is really 7. So that's why it's 2 times 10 to 7. For letter I, okay, so looking at letter I, you got to do order of operations. Okay, you've got to divide first and then add. So 5 times 10 to the negative 4th divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 8th. 5 divided by 1 is 5. Subtract my exponents, and I should have a negative 4 minus a negative 8, which is going to just come out to be 4. I'm going to add that to 9 times 10 to the 5th. Make them both the bigger exponent. So I'm going to leave this one alone and make this 4th move it over 1. So 0. 0.5 times 10 to the 5th going to be 9.5 times 10 to the 5th. 